Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that sounded great. Let's do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. I am worship associate Zena Kingshill. Our minister, Reverend Dana Warsnop, has a well-deserved day of rest. We are very pleased to welcome back our good friend, Tanner Linden, to our pulpit today. All are welcome here into this community of resilience and care. I welcome all of you in person and online. Each Sunday, we also take a moment to acknowledge that the land each of us are on is the ancestral home of indigenous peoples. Here in most of Ventura County, this is the Chumash people. We have one announcement at this, our last service of the year. Next Sunday, the first service of the new year, Reverend Dana will lead our fire communion service in which we burn away that which is no longer useful or necessary so that we enter the new year with energy and hope. Good morning. I am worship associate Rob March. We invite those who are Zooming or streaming into the service this morning to light a chalice or candle at home as Tanner lights the chalice of our free faith here in the sanctuary. Our invocation this morning comes with words from Andrea Hawkins Cramper. Gather we now into this space, this time when the wheel turns and the veil shatters. Gather we now to remember, to grieve, to prophecy, to complete our harvests before the long, dark winter comes. Gather we now to tell old stories and sing old songs, to be as we have always been, the voice of our people eternal. Gather we now to celebrate, to celebrate that which was, that which is, and that which will be. Gather we now as we have always done, Sunday after Sunday, week after week, month after month. Whether it's here in the congregation or online, during rains, mudslides, fires, or pandemic, we continue to meet. Gather as we have always done united by story and bound by love. Come, let us worship together. Good morning, good morning. I'm Zach Spencer, I'm filling in for Carolyn today. Hi, Julie. <laughs> and um, we'll be singing number 29, I invite you to rise in body or spirit, as well as the people at home, rise in body or spirit. Uh, number 29, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, God of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the Star. 
Have a seat. Our first reading today is The Rhythm of Life by George Krokos. The rhythm of life is like an endless melody and goes on regardless of where we might be. Throughout the day and all during the night, it never stops, though it's not obvious to sight. When the sun rises and again when it sets, that rhythm of life all things never forget. With each coming and going, to and fro, we're all part of the man, main working show. In birth and death, as in the growth and decay, all creatures have their moments of play. In the heavens above and on the earth below, one after another, they all must come and go. With the ebb and flow of each wave in the ocean, it's apparently like a ceaseless rhythmic motion. Though they're caused by the moon's gravitational pull and is itself also subjected to be being either new or full. In the four seasons of the year and all the changes they bring, as the earth revolves around the sun, affect every living thing. By these regular distinct cycles, each lasting its period of time, it's a universal ongoing phenomenon and never ending rhyme. Whether we like it or not, it embraces us all in its sway, and our affairs in this world enjoy their night and day. It makes order gradually come forth out of chaos, it seems, and helps us all to survive and even realize some dreams. We all have certain basic needs and so many wants or desires and flowing with the rhythm of life all in harmony transpires. If we have unnatural obsessions by which our mind is caught, then it's freedom with a high price that is actually most sought. The rhythm of life has an existence and power of its own and all that does ever happen by it unmistakably is known. When we become in tune with its reality and stay in touch, all that goes on in the world will be to our benefit as such. This congregation gives away our collection to an organization in the larger community or to funds to help, that help people in our own church. Those at home have two ways to give, through the link posted in the chat and by texting from your phone at 844-901-1779. Folks present can text to give or you can still write a check or give cash, then drop it in the baskets at the back of the sanctuary after the service. Our offering today goes out to our own InReach Outreach Fund, which helps people in our own congregation who find themselves in a bind. It allows us to reach out and help people in the community who fall through the holes in the social safety net. We recently got a call from a single mom who had been referred by her case manager because no established fund could help her and her three children avoid eviction. She lived in Oxnard, so she wasn't eligible for help from the Ventura Homeless Prevention Fund, which operates only in Ventura. And similar programs have not yet been set up in any other cities in this county. The county has a similar program, but they couldn't help her because she lives in subsidized housing. She couldn't pay her rent because the amount she is supposed to pay is based on child support that the court had ordered her ex-husband to pay. He couldn't pay the child support because he had lost his job and that the housing authority couldn't lower the amount she was supposed to pay because a court order said she was to get the child support, which is, it's a vicious cycle. Um, fortunately, when compassion and common sense make it clear that help is needed, we can take action. We sent a check to the housing authority for $300, and that was all that was needed to keep this mom and her kids in their home. Thanks so much for giving generously, as you always do. I 
smile it's the joy overflowing joy overflowing from you when i smile it's the joy overflowing joy overflowing from you what can i say how can i thank you for this day oh god my blessings are overflowing now when i cry it's the joy overflowing joy overflowing from you when i cry it's the joy overflowing joy overflowing from you what can i say how can i thank you for the day oh god my blessings are overflowing now no words no words you already know the secrets of my soul cuz i'm a part of you everything i see and everything i ever do when i see it's the joy overflowing joy overflowing from you when i see it's the song overflowing song overflowing from you what can i say How can I thank you for this day? Oh God, my blessings are overflowing. My blessings are overflowing. My blessings are overflowing. That was lovely, thank you. We are grateful for the generosity of this congregation, which weaves a tapestry of love we call community. Within these walls and over the frequencies that connect us online, covering all of us in waves of love. Each week, we share the great joys and sorrows that grace our lives. This is one way we stay connected within our community. We place stones and water for both the celebrations and sorrows in our hearts. The ripples that go out represent the way that joys and sorrows are felt throughout the community. You can submit a joy or sorrow for sharing via a link on the website uuventura.org or a link in our Thursday email bulletin UUCV this week. Those received by 10 p.m. on Saturday will be shared that Sunday. This week, no joys and sorrows were shared. So instead, I'll immediately invite you now to speak into the gathered community or write into the Zoom chat the names of those you wish to celebrate 
memorialize, or those in need of the loving embrace of this beloved community. Please feel free to continue to add to the chat even after the silent pause. Zena will place one final stone in the water to represent those names left unsaid. Please join me in singing number 201, Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. instead. Strength 
like a mountain, I've got strength like a mountain, I've got strength like a mountain in my soul. This reading is an excerpt from this is water, some thoughts delivered on a significant occasion about living a compassionate life by David Foster Wallace. In the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as atheism. There is no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship and an outstanding reason for choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship be it JC or Allah, be it Yahweh or the Wiccan Mother Goddess or the Four Noble Truths or some infrangible set of ethical principles, is that pretty much anything else you will worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they're where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never have enough, never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your own body and beauty and sexual allure and you will always feel ugly and when time and age start showing you will die a million different deaths before they finally plant you worship power you will feel weak and afraid and you will need ever more power over others to keep the fear at bay worship your intellect being seen as smart you will end up feeling stupid a fraud always on the verge of being found out. On one level, we all know this stuff already. It's been codified as myths, proverbs, cliches, epigrams, parables, the skeleton of every great story. So what do you choose to worship? How does that affect the rhythm of your life? I'd like to take a moment to pray together. I invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes, or rest your gaze. Whatever feels most comfortable for you in this moment. Spirit of life, we ask you to hear us. Hear our heartache. Hear our relief. Hear our joy. Spirit of life, hear our triumph. Spirit of love, we ask you to hold us. Hold our grief. Hold our gratitude. Hold our pride. Hold, spirit of love, hold our arrogance. And God, God of many names and beyond all naming, God, we ask this of you today. May those who are lonely, may they find community. May those who are hurt, may they find healing. May those who are unemployed find jobs. May the outcasts find acceptance. May the heartbroken find wholeness. May those of us who are confused, may we find clarity. The homeless find harbor. The fearful find bravery. The weak find strength. May those of us who are stuck in our despair, may we find 
hope. God of many names and beyond all naming, we ask this of you. We ask to hold each and every one of us in the heart of love. May we all be held in the heart of love. My beloveds in the sanctuary today, turn to the person on your right. Turn to the person on your right right now and say, I love you. Good, good. Turn to the person on your left and say, you are enough. (laughs) Good, good. Join me in placing your hand on your heart. My beloveds on Zoom or watching on YouTube, join us in placing your hand on your heart and saying out loud, I am enough. I am enough. Each and every person is fearfully and beautifully made. You are enough. We are enough. May we all be held in the heart of love. Bring it on, everything new, everything different, everything true. I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's going to be everything new. I'm through crying. I'm through waiting, I'm through hoping against all hope. I'm through longing for something gone that'll never return. I think I've finally learned, so bring it on. Everything new, everything different. Everything true, I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's gonna be everything new. I'm through grieving, I'm through dreaming that the life I had is ever coming back. No more wishing. On someone else's star that'll never be mine I think it's time, so bring it on Everything new, everything different, everything true I am ready for my next thing to do Oh, I know it's gonna be everything new And I've survived many times before Broken hearts and slamming doors I'll be alright, yes I will once more Just as I did back then I'm gonna rise again So bring it on be everything new so bring it on everything new everything different everything true I am ready for my next thing to do oh I know it's gonna be everything new I know It's going to be everything new. (laughs) 
Are you ever jamming along to one of those really, really catchy songs? Like it comes on the radio and you immediately, you're like, I know all the words. We know these songs, right? Sometimes it's a throwback, something you grew up with, and sometimes it's like a new pop that your grandkids listening to that you actually like. Um, and you trip up on one of the words. Like you're so sure the chorus is next but you're absolutely wrong. And by the time you get to the right place, you missed a huge part of the song and you just, it ruined your whole experience. You were so excited for this song. Life has felt a little like that these days, as if we're all a little offbeat. The words seem to be a little out of order. Our instruments are out of tune. Things just don't feel quite right. I can't be the only one who feels that. And I know that nothing I'm saying is new. Between the Thomas Fire in 2017, the mudslides in 2018, and our first COVID case in March 2020 in Ventura County, our collective grief is at an all-time high. In these times of panic and stress and trauma, we find ourselves living very out of tune with ourselves, with our partners, with our community, and this can become a coping mechanism of living with the pain, especially as social media has sensationalized every small town tragedy and has given a platform to every ugly hearted politician. It's so easy to fall into the trap of doom scrolling and doom surfing, just sitting there and like hoping to see something different even though you know nothing new is coming. All this can turn what should be the world's most powerful force for connection, the internet, into a place that leaves us disillusioned and disappointed, leave us feeling more disconnected than before. And you're hearing this from Gen Z here. Our December series here at UU Ventura is centered on opening to joy. And this is such an important theme as we move into the new year, allowing ourselves to feel joy. Just as we feel sadness and anger and fear, it's essential to living a well-rounded and full life. And often we confuse joy with happiness. But joy is an inner feeling. Happiness is just an outward expression. Joy is intertwined with depth and meaning and purpose. Joy can confront things like panic and fear, depravity. Joy can be there in those moments with us. Happiness can come and go. But before we can talk about how to receive joy in our lives, we need to learn how to recognize joy. And the journey to recognizing joy in our lives is connected, deeply connected, to getting back on beat. Recentering with our rhythm and the flow of the people around us. To truly open ourselves to joy we need to reclaim the pace of our lives. My message this Sunday is simple. It is the last Sunday in 2021. I don't want to leave you with something complex to chew on on the ride home. My message is simple. I'm going to offer you five moves that we can make as we enter 2022 to bring us into deeper relationship with ourselves, our loved ones, and our faith, and to bring us back on beat as we enter the new year. So I'm going to start with the first step in our journey 
of finding the rhythm of our lives. All right, so our first step is to take an instrument inventory, okay? First step, take an instrument inventory. Track with me here, because of course, I'm not actually sending you to count the instruments that you have, although I know some of you have many. Uh, in these times of pandemic, the routine of our daily lives has been upended. It seems as if as things return to a new normal, as we're back in the sanctuary and as we're back here up in the pulpit and I'm preaching live in person, as things return to this different normal, it seems as though we have less time than before, less patience, less energy, and we're pulled in a million different directions, especially with the holidays, especially with the holidays. And the truth is that this type of lifestyle can shield us from experiencing the joy that life has to offer us. That's just the truth. When we live life offbeat, off pace, when we're not listening to the things around us, off rhythm, we're shielding ourselves from experiencing, recognizing the joy around us. So our first step, taking an instrument inventory, is about discerning the tool, tools, discerning the tools you have in your life that allow you to reclaim your pace and recenter your mind and body. These could be things like meditation, artwork, gardening, walks, drives, reading, sleeping in. My list is different than your list, than your list, than your list, and it goes on and on. So my question for you in step one is, what tools do you have to get yourself back on beat? And our second step, our second step is to build your band. Build your band, all right? That means to find the people around you with the instruments you need. All right, so we're getting our life back on rhythm, and our second step is to build your band. As Unitarian Universalists, there are only a few things we know to be true. We doubt a lot of things, we question a lot of things, and there's only a few things we know as carnal truths, and this is one. We are not meant to go through this life alone. We are not meant to go through this life alone. Building your band is crucial to finding your rhythm and allowing ourselves the room to recognize joy when it enters and blesses our life. From your fellow congregants to your coworkers, find people in your lives that allow you to sing. Find people in your lives that will join with you in song who will laugh with you, cry with you, celebrate with you. As we move into this new year, it is a great opportunity to reevaluate the people you surround yourselves with. Is it time to join a new group or club or class? Get involved in new justice work, something that nurtures your soul. Building your band is about surrounding yourself with a community of people that will partner with you in your journey of finding your rhythm of life. Finding your rhythm of life. And that brings us to step three, to getting our beat back and getting, finding our rhythm of life. Step three is find the tuners. Step three is find the tuners. Just as important as finding a community to support you and discovering the tools that center you, it's critical to find the people that ground you, all right? And I know as soon as I said people that ground you, immediately people came to mind for you. These are your spouses, your parents, your children, ministers, teachers, doctors, the healers in your life the people that replenish, replenish your soul. And the best part is they may not be somebody you know yet. You haven't met 
This is a truth I love. I love to repeat. You haven't met all of the people who are going to love you. You haven't met all of the people who are going to love you. Often it feels that way. But before your spouse was your spouse, they were a stranger. Before your mentor was your mentor, they were a stranger. Before Reverend Dana pastored this congregation, she was a mere stranger to us. Finding your tuners is about looking around and finding the healers, the helpers, the companions, the people who ground you and who will help you find that rhythm. And all of this brings us to step four. My message is simple, four, five steps. This is step four. Step four is to enjoy the concert. Okay, enjoy the concert, all right? So on the journey of discovering the ebb and flow of joy in our daily lives, this one is, I believe, the most important. Listening. Listening to the pace and the rhythm and the beat of the world around us. So often we're intrinsically focused. But being in touch with our surroundings the people and places around us is so, so critical. So many of us prioritize the go, go, go of life. And I struggle with this every day. Many of you have known me since I was young and you know that I, for lack of a better word, am a hustler. I have always been um, this way, I mean, here I am at age 20 preaching to you, and I, I always have a to-do list. Things have to get done, and I get it. There is always shit to do. There always is, and I'm not saying to skimp out on responsibilities or to slow down, because people are relying on you to pay rent, to provide care, nurturing, but enjoying the concert is just about listening a little closer, listening to the random babbles of your children or grandchildren or the odd thoughts of your partner that you would normally just kind of ignore or, you know, those things in your life that you just tune out. You're just so used to tuning out, whether it's, the neighbor's dog that's barking or whatever it is. Listen a little closer because sometimes it's the most obscure moments that create the most meaningful melodies. Sometimes it's the most obscure moments that create the most meaningful melodies. But we have to be open to hearing them when all we prioritize is ourselves and the go, go, go of life, something that I struggle with. Look, I'm not over here saying, do this, do this, do this, right? Like, I'm some better person that's figured all this stuff out. I'm just saying, hey, this is hard. Let's figure out a way to do it together. When you prioritize the go, go, go of life, you miss the small moments. Those little things that can help us Get back on beat. Notice our rhythm. And recognize joy when it enters our lives. So often we're so focused on the pace and things are going so quickly that joy comes and, and goes so quickly we don't even notice. And that brings me to step five, our fifth and final step. Step five is rock out. That's right. Rock out. Yeah, yeah. some of you knew it was coming. Rock out. That's right. You know how I preach. All right. So rock out is focused on how we receive joy. Okay. So this is how this, this step gives us the permission to experience joy in every form it takes. Because as adults, as we grow older, we often deny ourselves the freedom of feeling joy to its fullest extent. We leave that to children. We leave that to children. 
But after we've taken our inventory and built our band and found our tuners and we've enjoyed the concert, now it's our turn to play along. When we feel the routine and pace and rhythm of joy in our lives, it needs to be seized. When we feel that rhythm, when we feel we're back on beat, we can recognize joy. And with childlike wonder and awe, and with an appreciation for all it takes to allow the joy to arrive, and with reverence for how hard it is to get there, and for how many people go without it, for how many people go without it, we can accept joy. Now, I said this message opening to joy was perfect for moving into a new year on this last Sunday of 2021. And for one reason that is, is I do not believe in New Year's resolutions. I just don't. Um, if you weren't going to the gym before, you're not going to the gym now. I'm just going to say that. Um, I find that New Year's resolutions are often a disappointing way to start the year. Whatever it is you pick, whether it's journaling or going to the gym or a certain diet or there's a million things that people try or, you know, writing letters or calling a certain person or whatever it is. It often starts the year with this sour taste because we do it until we just don't, right? Because that's how life is. We're not, we're imperfect creatures and we're beautiful because we're imperfect but we're imperfect creatures. And then we start the year feeling as if we've already failed, as if we've already failed. And look at that, we're off beat. We feel off rhythm already. But something I do believe in is New Year's intentions. I believe that we can look back on our past year with reflection and allow ourselves to realize the places that went unnurtured and pay special attention to them going into the new year. It isn't a checklist or a to-do list. It isn't a do every day or get done in the moment type of thing. It's nothing like that. It's just a notice. It's an invitation. These things are an invitation to take your inventory, to build your band, to find your tuners, to enjoy your concert and rock out. These are an invitation so that you can get a little bit more on beat. Because when our lives are a little more on beat, a little more rhythmic, we're more connected to the people around us, we can recognize joy when it does enter and bless our lives. We can open our hearts up to it, enjoy it, enjoy it to its fullest, to its fullest. All of this will, will allow our lives to be more rhythmic and connected and allow us to notice the ebb and flow of joy as it enters our life. And ushering into the new year is nothing close to a reset button. It's just not. That's why I hate New Year's resolutions. I just, they don't work. It's just, it's just the day after tomorrow. It's just a new calendar year. It's nothing like a reset button. However, if we move into a, the new year with intention and focus, we can work on building our beat back. Amen and blessed be. And join me in body and spirit. I think we're going to be doing glory, glory, hallelujah this time for sure. Shouting hallelujah since I laid 
Join me in reading the words on the screen as we extinguish our chalice today. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment, those we carry into our lives until we are together again. So after the benediction and prelude today, those of you online will be invited to join into breakout rooms. And those of you here can move on outside to discuss uh, the wonderful five steps of ebb and flow that we learned about today. I invited you today to take an inventory of your instruments, to build a band of people around you, to find the tuners and the healers, the people to companion with you on your journey, to listen to your surroundings and enjoy the concert of life, and to play along when you can to rock out. Opening your heart to joy is an act that is easy to say, but hard to do, as is most of what we preach about each week and what I preached about today. But I hope some of what I said can be a, a touchstone, a grounding rock for how we move into the new year as we move out of the holidays, as we reconnect with friends and family around us, as we see how new strains of the pandemic develop, let us allow space to find our beat and rhythm. Rooted in love and guided by faith, I wish you well in your journey of getting back on beat and returning to your rhythm. May we all be held in the heart of love.